Good evening, um, Joe and Chris with you again this evening. Um, here with Lee, who is one of the uh, duty locality officers for the East of England Ambulance Service um, in Norwich. So I'm going to hand over to Lee, he's going to give you a tour of the ambulance and uh, take any questions that you might have. So Lee, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, good evening everybody. My name is Lee Fox. I'm one of the duty locality officers for the East of England Ambulance Service. Um, so obviously we're in the back of one of our uh, ambulance vehicles at the moment. Um, here in Norwich we operate a make ready facility so all our ambulances are cleaned and washed and fueled and stocked by a team of dedicated people leaving the paramedics free to pick up the ambulance and respond to emergencies. Um, so if you want to have a quick tour around the ambulance guys, um, on the floor we have our basic response bag um, which contains oxygen and airway equipment um, for resuscitation purposes. There's also a selection of oxygen masks for different uh, size people, paediatrics and different concentrations of oxygen. And there's some basic dressings and some diagnostic gear in there as well. Um, that's backed up by uh, a paramedic bag on the floor there that contains paramedic specific equipment like uh, intravenous access gear um, and also uh, intravenous fluids and airway, advanced airway management kit. Um, if we go round the ambulance from that side, so we have a, a defibrillator monitor that sits on that little perch there. Um, that enables us to monitor a patient's heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturations and also um, actually defibrillate, so uh, give the patient an electric shock to restart a heartbeat. Um, there's also a suction machine tapped in the corner there, um, so that provides us the facilities to suction out an airway to clear any airway secretions, um, a horrible muck like that. Um, along the top here there's a selection of oxygen masks and spares um, and also uh, some consumables that we use in the uh, primary response bag. Um, it's Friday night so we have some vomit bowls. Um, unfortunately we do have a lot of alcohol related calls, particularly on weekend nights. So these are quite heavily used on weekend nights um, and just some uh, uh, pads for soaking up unmentionables. Um, other cupboards that we have, we have um, all tagged bags so they're sealed and ready to go. Um, pretty much does what it says on the tin really. We've got a dressings bag that's got some basic and advanced dressings in. Um, infusion gear so intravenous fluids um, and also uh, advanced airway management and intravenous access gear. Probably particularly relevant at this time of year, we're getting towards bonfire night, but we carry an advanced burns kit. Um, so there's lots of uh, different shapes and size dressings in there that are gel soaked for burns and things like that. Um, in these cupboards are pretty much just consumables um, and infection control and gowns and things for infectious patients. Bottom cupboard, uh, we have uh, a range of traction splints and splints for bony injuries. Um, so they'd be put on for broken bones and things like that. Likewise behind you there's a selection of splints up there for splinting bony injuries. Um, it's winter so blankets are quite nice at this time of year. Um, and that pretty much sums up what we carry in the back of the ambulance. Um, one of the uh, newer bits of kit that we carry now, um, the manager in Norwich actually carries this piece of equipment, uh, is a it's a Lucas automatic CPR device, which um, eliminates things like uh, rescue or fatigue. So it provides uh, sustained cardiac chest compressions. Um, and this is particularly relevant for people that are transported to hospital in cardiac arrest for um, correction of that cause of that cardiac arrest. Um, I'll just show you how it works, actually, if you'll. I'll come around here. So this, um, this particular device is deployed to a patient in cardiac arrest, um, so we set it up um, and essentially it just carries on the job of CPR that would be done manually normally. Um, so if I switch it on you can see exactly what, what the device does. for some ventilations by a face mask. A 
as you can see, a brilliant bit of kit. And that pretty much sums up the back of one of our vehicles. I'll just see if any of the um, any of the users have got any uh, questions. If you've got any questions, then please um, please just ask on the feed. Tap a question, and I'll uh, I'll relay it. Someone's asked how much does the Lucas kit cost? It's a very good question. Um, it's not a cheap bit of kit. Um, we do have one device within each of our locality areas. So one currently sits with the Norwich area team. Uh, one sits in Kings Lynn. Um, and there's one also over in Great Yarmouth. So they're not particularly widely spread at the moment, but hopefully as time goes on, we'll be able to afford a few more. Has anybody got any other, other questions? Someone's asked, how does Lucas deal with small people? It looks aggressive. It is quite an aggressive bit of equipment. So we have very specific guidelines as to age range of patients that they can be used on. Um, so they're specifically adults only um, for obvious reasons. Um, unfortunately, good quality CPR can sometimes incur some damage like rib fractures. But obviously the benefit of performing CPR on a patient outweighs the risk of minor like rib fractures. So as we were discussing before, you'd, you'd put this on a patient, you'd take them in the back of the ambulance, that would be, they'd be getting good quality CPR all the way there, they'd be hooked up to a ventilator. So when you arrive at A&E, um, they'd be wheeled straight in with that CPR continuing, the ventilation continuing into the uh, recess room where doctors would be able to immediately take over with that good quality CPR. Absolutely, Continuing. And, and, and for so those patients that get taken to the emergency uh, department with this particular device in situ, that can be used in A&E as well for a period of time. So it, 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 it helps patients, yeah. So someone's asked, does it stop if a heartbeat is restored? So would you have uh, a heart monitor up on? Yeah, so the monitor that we saw earlier um, is hooked up to the patient at all times. Um, there are indications on that monitor for when a patient's heartbeat does return. So instantly we'd just stop that, that mechanical CPR and then just support the patient with that. Obviously it can stay in situ in case we lose that heartbeat again and it can start again. Uh, do ambulances have twin stretchers these days? Uh, they don't, no. So our ambulances are for single patients only in terms of a stretcher, but that having been said, they can be used for seated patients as well. Um, so we've got seats on this side uh, that have got oxygen therapy points as well. So we can provide people with oxygen that are seated, um, smoke inhalation, that sort of thing, asthma potentially. So yeah, we have various options for seating people as well. Someone's just asked, and this is this is the question that I'd like to ask as well. Thank you, uh, Maidstone on bike. What do your rank slides mean? Uh, so these particular ones. Three pips. Yep. So, so police, that would be chief inspector. Uh, for the ambulance service, that is a duty locality officer, which is a, a bronze level officer, so the immediate operational officer at an instant, really. Excellent. Has anybody else got any other other questions? Someone's asked how many crews are on at any one time across Norfolk? So that varies according to time of day. Uh, we have a peak of day of around about 20 to 30 ambulances at any time during the day and that reduces to a peak of about 15 overnight and into the early hours into the morning. Lovely. Somebody has just asked can you show a 041? Oscar 41. Oscar 41 is that a... That is the is Land Rover that's parked outside. Oh is it? Is that a specific vehicle uh, then? It's is the it? duty to the officer's vehicle so again, for Norwich. Right yeah. so that's the vehicle that you'd be driving tonight yeah. would it? So you'd be deployed to incidences um, or yeah. incidents? Yeah. Um, how are comms done between the medic driver? Have you got a hatch have you? There is a hatch yep yeah, which can close for patient confidentiality reasons yep. or it can be open. Um, it can be quite difficult to hear between you sometimes but there are facilities for obviously radio comms and things as well. Lovely. So we just quickly going to have a, quick, yeah, a very, qu very quick look at your car because um, obviously I'm... I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Joe. Don't fall out. Someone's just asked they want to see the land road. Oh, So yeah, this is 041. <laughs> this is, oh, 
This is the famous 041, is it? So this is your car for the night. Looks probably the one of the best ones on the fleet. Is that supervisor's prerogative, is it? <laughs> it's it's for off-roading. So yeah. Get to instance, they're off-road. Yeah. Um, and it's just big enough to carry the extra equipment over the jokes and the the cars. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. All right. Well. Um, Thank you for um, for joining us. Thanks to Lee no for at all. giving the input. So, Thanks for you. Yeah, nice to meet you, and um, we'll catch up with you all later. Thanks very much.